All right, so we have finished our section on the English customary standard measurements, right? We've learned all of our special numbers, inches to feet, feet to yards, yards to miles, pint, to cups to pints, pints to quarts, quarts to gallons, all those and how to go back and forth, back and forth, converting between the two, right? So if you remember at the beginning of our measuring matter unit, we talked about the fact that there, we, that we couldn't just measure things how they did in the olden days with their hands, right? Or their feet or their arm spans because all of us have different size bodies. So that's not a very accurate way to measure. So scientists needed an accurate way to measure. So they made standard units of measurement that would be the same nationwide, worldwide really. So there are, we learned there are two different systems of measurement. Does anybody remember the two systems of measurement that we talked about, that we said there are? Kurt? Um, there is a Yes. And, uh, what one did we learn? There's the metric one. You're right. Metric system and the. Think of what country it's from. What country came up with these? This measurement system. Gabby. Customary. Customary or. English, right? Okay, so let's do a quick review. It says two major systems. I've got your textbook up here, so you don't even need to open it. We're going to read it together. Two major systems of measurement are currently in use around the world. The metric and the customary, or the English. Most nations rely on the international system of units, which the French developed. This system is also known as the metric system. Most of the world uses the metric system. Scientists worldwide use this system. England, however, developed the customary system and introduced it to many of its colonies. We, the United States, were a colony of England. That's why we were introduced to the English customary system of measurement. The United States and a few other countries use the customary system. The metric system, so we learned, that's why we learned it, right? We just got done with the whole week learning about the customary English system. Now we are headed into the metric system. The metric system has some distinct advantages over the customary system that make it much more practical for scientific measurements. So if you are in a medical field or a scientific field, a lot of those type of fields are going to switch to metric units because they're a lot easier. Um, the units of the metric system are based on the number 10. Multiples and fractions of 10 are relatively easy to work with. While many customary units have to be memorized, right? We learned that. We had to memorize 12 inches in a foot, three feet in a yard, 1,007. We had to learn all those. But for metrics, you don't have to memorize any of those. There's no special numbers. Everything is based on 10. So you might multiply one measurement to get to another one by 10 or by 100 or by 1,000. Much easier. Um, calculations in the customary system are much more difficult to do. The metric system uses a specific set of prefixes. The customary system does not use prefixes. Who knows what a prefix is? When it says the metric system is based on prefixes, what does that mean, Shepard? They put pre in a word. So yes. Preschool. Okay, got it. Is it only using pre? R-E, what about like, you have somebody who's happy, what's a prefix you could put in front of happy to say they're not happy? Uh, unhappy, so un is a prefix. Yeah. What if you um, use the word, let me think here, to engage, like you, you engage in an activity. What if you do not engage? What if you stop being engaged? What would that be? Disengage. So dis is a prefix. So a prefix is a little partial word before the word that changes the meaning of the base word. Does that make sense? Like dis or un or pre or re, like wind or rewind. Does that make sense? Okay, so the metric system does have something you need to memorize. You have to memorize 
prefixes because they affect the base. Hold on to that thought as we get into um, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. That is going to help you. Did he actually? Uh, did he actually? No, he was just a it's just a saying that helps you remember your prefixes in the right order. But we're going to remember King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. All right. That will help you when you take a quiz or when you need to convert measurements in the metric system. That will keep your prefixes right in order. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. We're going to learn what those prefixes are right now. So go ahead and open your King Henry Died by Drinking Chocolate Milk foldable. Open it up to the inside. It should look like this. Hold on one second here. Here we go. Okay, this is what the inside of your foldable should look like. I'm gonna need your full, complete 100% attention during this so that you don't get lost. This is kind of the base for the next few days of science. So you're going to wanna to really focus on what we have up here. Okay. We learned about three characteristics of matter that we are going to measure three characteristics. So like if I put a box in the middle of the room, things that we could measure about that box, okay? We learned about length. That's one characteristic you can measure in matter. What's the other thing? What else, what else, did, we, what else did we learn about? How to measure and how to convert measurements between? Length, what else? Juliet? Um, weight. weight. What was the third one? There's more than these three, but we learned about length, weight, and Shepard? Height. Well, so height with length, that all goes in the length category. That's all measuring height, width, depth, length. All of those go in the length category. Then we measure the weight of something. What was the third area? Yes? Mass, Mass kind of goes along with weight. We're going to lump those together. What was the third area? Think of all your measurements that you did, Bria. Oh, uh, no, we'll get to that one though. Time. Yes. No, we talked about time. Yes. Volume. Capacity or volume, right? We talked about gallons, quarts, cups, pints, ounces. That is capacity or volume. So the three areas, length, weight or mass, volume, capacity. We learned about those in the English customary system. We are going to also learn about those. How do we measure them? in metric systems. So I need all pens and pencils down. So I've got your full attention. All right, those of you who are already coloring your foldable or filling it in, can you put your pens down? Thank you. So I want your hands free, nothing in your hands, out of your hands. I know it's a temptation to color those foldables. So keep everything out of your hands. Okay. When we are learning about, when we are measuring length, in the English system, what are some measurements for length that we use? Jackson, you know some? Measurements of length, give me some examples in the English customary system. Inches. Inches. Feet. Feet. Yards. Yards. Centimeters. Centimeters. Up. Ah, that'd, be, that'd be metric. Uh, Inches, feet, yards, miles. Those are the ones we talked about. Now, you just crossed over. If we are measuring length, in the metric system. What is the base, basic unit of measuring length if you're using the metric system? What's the base unit, Juliet? Close, but there's a prefix before, so what's just the base of that word? What is it? No, what's the base of that word? You said centimeters which is a length measurement, but what's the base of that word if you take away the prefix of it? Kayla? Meter. Meter. So you need to know if I'm measuring length with the depth of something in metrics, your base unit for length is right here. So look, right in the middle, we're gonna be learning about the base unit. Meters measure length. 
right? You know what? I want. I wish that were on here. There's not a whole lot of space. Why don't you write length right above meter? Because I want you to remember um, that length. Or on both, because there's a bottom one too. Uh, let's just do it right here. Let's just have one spot where we know that the basic unit for measuring length in the metric system is a meter. The basic unit for measuring length when you're dealing with metrics is a meter. You don't have inches, feet, yards, all those different things. All you have is the meter. Then we're gonna put prefixes in front of it to change it rather than having completely different words. Now, we want to do weight. What is the base unit for weight when you're in the metric system? What's the base unit? Eli? Pounds? That would be the English system. Yes, pounds and tons. Oh. But if you're dealing with metrics, what is it? Grams. Grams. So underneath gram, could you put weight? Just so you know that whenever you're dealing with weight, you're going to be measuring it in grams. You're going to be measuring it in grams. What about when you're talking about capacity or volume? What would the base unit be if you're pouring milk and you're measuring it in the metric system? You're not doing that whole ounces, cups, pints, quarts, gallons. You know that whole system you have to work with? Uh-uh, none of that. You have one measurement that you have to deal with. It is, Kurt? Um, Liters. Yes, so that measures, we're going to put volume, that's a little bit easier than capacity, let's put volume. Don't eat, don't go into this area because you need this spot like I did, okay, try to squish it in there. Okay. Good, all right, so we're in the metric system. We only have three things to remember as of right now. If you're measuring in length, you measure in? Meters. If you're measuring the volume of something, you measure it in? Meters. If you're measuring the weight, you measure it in? Grams. Got it. Now, think about this. You don't want to measure an elephant's weight in grams. Because if you've got a gram and you've got like a paper clip and it's one gram, do you really want to measure an elephant in grams? No, it's just like you don't want to measure a mile in inches. So you've got to come up with different measurements. But since this is the base, all we're going to do is we're going to put prefixes in front of that base word to change the meaning of the word. So watch, here's how we're going to do this. Let's talk about a meter first. We've got the prefix deci, cente, and milli, those are things that you're going to put in front of it. So you will have a millimeter, a centimeter, and a decimeter. What do you think? Let's talk about centi first. Let's take this one right in the middle. You don't need to write this down, but can you think of other words that kind of have this same prefix or that same word within it? Look at that, centi. What other words does that bring to mind? Kayla? Centipede, what else? Anything else that you can think of? Yes, Abby? Centimeter. Centimeter, yes. Anybody else? Kurt? Um, milliseconds. That's in milli. So we're in centi, but hold that thought. What about this word? Yes, Jackson? So let's, let's not put it in front of these, but let, how about this word? What about just sense? Oh, I thought about that, I was thinking I that. Was thinking that. What, or what about this word? What about century? Okay, when you look at centipede, sense, and century. Wait, oh, yeah, it has a No, just sent. Oh, but you never said that. So sorry. Oh, okay, well, you, I'll catch you on the next on the next one when we do Milla. Okay, look at this. What do you think, if you had to take a guess, an educated guess based on looking at those words, what do you think the prefix sent it would mean? If you're looking at century, 
sense, centipede. What do you think that word might mean, Shepard? A hundred, like not a hundred, it's more like. Is it a hundred. Yeah. Because a century is how many, how many years is a century? How many cents are in a dollar? hundred. And suppose I'm guessing a centipede should have like a hundred-ish legs, yeah? So the word centi means 100. So if we say centimeter, how many centimeters do you think are in a meter? A hundred. One hundred centimeters fit into a meter. If I say centiliter, how many centiliters do you think fit into a liter? 100. What if I say a centigram? Centigram? 100. Can we write this down? You can write those three things down. Centimeter, centiliter, centigram. All of them mean if you take a meter, a liter, and a gram, and you chop them up into 100 pieces, each one of those 100 pieces, each one one hundredth of a meter equals... A centimeter or a centiliter or a centigram, right? These are one one hundredth of the base. They're a hundredth of the base. That means it's just one little tiny piece. So copy those ones in there. Centimeter, centiliter, centigram. I have one for... Okay. Okay, now... I want you, okay, I'm going to try to squish this up here, guys. Okay, there we go. I should have kept that up there a little bit. Um, go down to your bottom one. Go down to this one down here. Okay, just wait. Hold up. We're going to go down to this one where it says centa. We realize that centa is just a hundredth of the base. Does that make sense? It's one one hundredth. So how are we going to write that? We are going to write... 0 0.01, I know some of you can't see this down low here, kind of just scooch over. Or what's another way you can write a hundredth in a fraction? One over 100, right? I'm running out of space on my board here to fit it all on. But you either have, make sure you can see this on here. I'm gonna prop this up a little bit so these guys can see. All right. Wait, does that bottom one say one? Uh, so this is one over 100, right? Uh, you have one one hundredth or you have one one hundredth written as a decimal or as a fraction. That is showing you that a centimeter, a centiliter, or a centigram is one one hundredth of the base. It's a hundredth of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I know some of you are already ahead of the game. If I go to the word, the prefix milla, what do you think the prefix milla means? Give me some words that start with milla. Oh, oh, oh see, see. one. Okay, let's stay away from the, these ones. Different words other than metric units that um, start with milla, yes. Milligram. Yeah, milligram, but that's again a, a, a measurement. So an, other than measurements, yes. Okay, hey, again, yeah. that's a measurement, oh, so yes. Good. Give me some other type of word other than measurements. Oh. Oh. Eli? Oh. Millipede. Yeah. Okay. Seriously, you took mine. <laughs> Millipede, yeah. what else? Cece. Yeah. Yes? Millennium. What's that? Oh. Millennium. Millennium. What is a millennium, guys? A thousand years. So what do, we, what do we think that the prefix milla means? A thousand. A thousand. A thousand. So that means... I don't think so either. We'll have to look that up. Um, okay, so we have a millimeter, a milliliter, and a milligram. Write those in there. Who has another one? Yes. What's that? 
I think I know. Do not confuse this one with a million. Sometimes people confuse and think, oh, that means a million. No, it actually means a thousand. That's what, um, whatever. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, you're going to go down here where it says Milla, and you're going to write that anything with the Milla is going to be one one thousandth of the base. It's going to only be one one thousandth of the original base. That's how much it's worth. One one thousandth of the base. That means if you took the base and cut it up into a thousand pieces, it'd be just one of those thousand pieces. All right. You guys already filled in these ones. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you said it's right. No, but Okay, now, based on what you have already learned, let's look at this one. Okay, any guesses on deci? If we have a decimeter, deciliter, decigram, what do you think the prefix deci is going to mean based on the pattern that this one is a thousand, this one is a hundred, what do we think this one's gonna be, Gigi? Decimal, yes. What do we think that this is going to mean? What do you think the word deci means? The prefix deci means? This one means a thousand. This one means a hundred. What do you think that one means? Lydia? Okay. Ten. Ten. This one means ten. So we will have a decimeter, a deciliter, and a decigram. Write all those in there. These are measurements of length, volume, and weight. A decigram. <coughs> and deci, we discovered, means a tenth. So you're going to write down here, it's a tenth or one tenth. If you took a meter and you cut it up into ten pieces, one of those pieces would be a decimeter. If you took a liter and you poured it into 10 different cups equally, each of those would be a deciliter because deci means it's one tenth of the base unit. So these are all smaller than the base, right? Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. Like a millimeter is way smaller than a base because you're gonna chop up into a thousand pieces. This is smaller than the base. This is smaller than the base. Then you have the base. Now we're going to get into things that are bigger than a meter, a liter, and a gram. They're bigger. So we're going to put prefixes in that make it bigger. So let's go over here. We've got deca, hecto, and kilo. Those are our new prefixes. Anybody have an idea of deca? What that might be? Yes. It is going to be oh, 10 nice. times bigger. You know how this was one tenth of this and a hundredth of this and a thousand? Uh, this is actually 10 times bigger. So you have a decameter, a decaliter, and a decagram. And a deca, not to be confused with deci, D-E-C-I. This is D-E-K-A. Deca meter, deca liter, deca gram. Yes, Jackson. Yeah, of course. Yep, there's people up here. You can always come up if you can't read it. So while this is one tenth of the base, deca is ten times the base. Does that make sense? Sure. This is ten times. Right? The base unit would be one. This is ten times. This is one tenth. Ten. Ten times bigger than a meter. Where is for X ten? Yep. Times ten. All right. What about hecto? Any ideas what hecto might mean based on our pattern? We have times ten times one tenth. 
Oh, times one one hundredth. What do we think a hecto is going to be? Lydia. Times one hundred. And that is going to be a hectometer. Oh, I think I know the last one. A hectoliter and a hectogram. What are with these uh, weird names? It kind of sounds like a hexagon. Yes, it does. Go ahead and fill all those in. Jackson, you should look just like this on the top. Okay, you just flipped them, that's fine. Yes? Um, I think I know what kilo is. What do you think kilo might be? Um, one times one million? No. Oh, one thousand. One thousand. thousand. When I say a million. Yes. Times one thousand. You're going to have a kilometer and a kiloliter and a kilogram. Kilo. Kilo. Kilometer. Kilo. Kiloliter. Sounds like a meal. Kilogram. Kilo. Kilo. Am I thinking of something way different than this? Oh, yes, a kilometer? Right. Kilometer and a kilometer are the same thing, just pronounced what, differently. What is a kilometer? Like in this, in um, the US and, and the UK, um, usually it's um, MPH for a car, miles per hour, and then in Europe it's Miles per kilogram. Yeah. I, uh, miles per kilometer. Yeah, or kilometer. kilometer. Yeah, kilometer. because when you're in Europe, when you're in Europe, most of the European countries, most countries in the world use this system. So if they're measuring, they're not measuring in miles. They're measuring in kilometers. They're not going to measure in meters, right? A meter stick is about a yard. So you don't measure that, but you would measure in groups of a thousand meters or Whoa. kilometers. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. How many yards are in? How many yards are in a mile? Uh, 1,760. 1, 1, How many meters are in a kilometer? 1,000. See, it's a little bit easier to remember the differences between metric system. Yes. And also a mile is 1,600 meters. 1,600 meters. Because a, um, a, like a running track yes. is 400. Yes, yes, good. So when you're running, Shepard, since you come from a running family, when you run track, do they measure in metrics or do they measure in English customary? Probably metric. Probably metric, okay. Like do you run the mile or do you run the 1600 meter? Or do they call it the same thing? Well, they call it the mile and then there's like the 100 meter. Okay, so kind of both. Okay, so here is your job. You need to make sure that you know all of these prefixes and what they mean. So you're not having to memorize special numbers, but you do have six prefixes that you need to memorize and they need to be memorized in order and you need to know what they mean. So that is why we have King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. King, Kilo, Henry, Hecto, died. Deca, by, this is the base, drinking, desa, chocolate, senta, milk, millet. So when you go to take your quiz and I say, I want you to write out all the prefixes in order and what they mean, you say to yourself, King Henry died by cho drinking chocolate milk. So you say, kilo, hecto, deca, base, desa, senta, millet. Because you have that sentence that you can help with. And then